Hello everybody and happy Saturday. Today I am excited to be here with you to have our monthly antique doll collector magazine read party. So what happens in the read party is we get our magazines together and we enjoy reading the articles and looking at the pictures and chatting about what some of our favorite parts of this month's issue are. This is a very special issue. I am so excited about it. There was so much that I enjoyed about this issue and I think this is one of the best magazines out there, you guys. So if you would like to treat yourself to a little monthly just treat, I highly recommend Antique Doll Collector. You can go to antiquedollcollector.com and you can subscribe on digital or um, actual print of a mat, the digital or the hard copy, I guess you would say. <laughs> the actual print of the magazine. But you guys know what I mean. And a lot of people do both. They get the digital and they get the actual magazine. And so that way, the, when the digital comes out, you get access to it immediately, especially if you want to shop the ads and stuff like that. And um, I really like having a magazine to actually flip through and stuff like that. So hi, everybody. It is so fun to see you. I'm looking down here at the comments. Hello. Uh, good afternoon, wherever you are in the world. Thank you so much for tuning in. My name is Rachel Hoffman, and, and if you guys hear some rustling and tumbling and snorting and groaning, I apologize uh, already because we have all the bulldogs over here. Murray doesn't make much noise until he starts barking, but we also invited my mom's pug over, her pug Lucy, and then we also, um, Holly, is the name of the pug, that wild pug. Her last one was Lucy. And um, it's a full house. And my mom is also here over, just right over there watching her favorite show, Downton Abbey. So um, Remy Lou, we, we've just got a packed house, but it's a lot of fun. So treat yourself to Antique Doll Collector. It is such a steal. And I am so excited about this month's issue because there are, there is just a lot of wonderful things happening in here. And, um, these P.D. Smith dolls, you guys, are amazing. And they are so, oh, these dolls are just amazing. So Susan Foreman did such a great job. So we're going to just get to it, open the magazine, and get going. Our special guest right over here, my mom's favorite paper mache. Like I said in my post this morning, having her over here because I grew up with her is like having a special guest in the house. It's a new experience for me. I've never had one of my mom's dolls over here hanging out, but because I've gotten to know this doll so much over the years, right mom, this is one of your favorite dolls. Having her over here is like having a special guest in our house. I don't, she doesn't wanna leave anytime soon. She's just so much fun. So if you guys are tuning in, thank you so much. The video lives here on YouTube and um, let's get to it. So I'm gonna turn the camera around and if you're here, let me know where you're tuning in from. It's always so good to see you. So here we have our wonderful cover, January, 2020. Always, always wonderful. But this is like perfect because Jan uh, not January, February. February is Valentine's. And so it is pink themed. And to have this these happy little babies on the cover, I think was just so appropriate for February. So right when we get to it, of course, there are some great ads right in the beginning. There's always, uh, there's always a lot of really good ads. Again, as you guys know, I like to watch the Super Bowl for the ads, and so it's fun for me. I'm gonna just move the camera right, right there. Uh, it's fun for me to see these ads. I love the ads, and the people who take out the ads put in a lot of effort on these ads. Marianne Spinelli has a beautiful, wonderful, stylish girl. She comes with all of those wonderful things, and mosey and ride along over right here we have the carmel doll shop who look at their grouping of stylish wonderful dolls they just look beautiful they always do such a great job with their ads so i love this did you guys have a favorite ad for this issue i i don't have a favorite ad there's so many great ads in here so let's oh matrix by mail they might be my favorite ad they did such a great ad look at this pages and pages and again I love the color for February it's just so pretty this gentleman right here very important 
13, I love the 1300 series Simon and Halbigs. That is a great, great doll. Look at that, cool. So many wonderful dolls popping out on one page. I just love it. So one thing that's very exciting that happened is uh, a new book by Dare, um, by Brooke Ashley came out. So did you guys read the first Lonely Doll book? It's such a famous book. And um, The Lonely Doll is a children's story written in 1957 by Dare Wright. And it stars Edith and the doll. And it's just, it's just such a wonderful book. But um, a second book came out. So I am really excited about this. So if you guys have picked up that um, book, let me know. And of course, the Ohio National Doll Show is coming up in October. There we go. Another fun ad from Philip May. This looks like a great auction in Kansas City right here coming up next month. So many wonderful things. Love that little Gretchen right there. That's really pretty. And of course, all the brews and wonderful dolls. Hello, everybody that's tuning in. It's so good to see you on this beautiful Saturday afternoon. This is a fun little article by Linda Edward on uh, building a collection of character dolls. So character dolls are definitely some of my favorite dolls in the entire world. I think they're just so wonderful and they're just so revolutionary of the time because they just have these different faces and they weren't considered perfect like, like a lot of the, I don't know, the pretty dolly face dolls that, that we know of. This looks like another fun auction. There are so many different ways to buy beautiful dolls. So you can get them from auctions, from dealers, from doll shows. It's just wonderful. It's just important to get them no matter how you do it, right? This is continuing the character um, article, which is so fun. So you guys, the National Antique Doll Dealers Association is having a show coming up in Charleston, South Carolina on May 1st through 3rd. And the wonderful thing about it is the dealers are incredible. There's going to be beautiful and amazing. If you are an antique doll collector, this is the show for you because they don't have modern dolls. So this, you're, it's always such a treat. Anyone that can go to the show, you're in for something amazing. But what I'm really excited about is the bus tour to Cheryl Lane's house. And you guys, Cheryl Lane has an amazing collection of dolls. I have been on a bus tour to her house at a different Nada show, and it was so fun. She even gave us chocolate. I don't know if she's gonna do that this time, but you guys, it was so fun. Something definitely not to miss. Christine, you got Brooke Ashley's book. Oh, awesome. Give us a book review. Let us know what you think. So um, the National Antique Doll Dealer Show, let me just turn this around so you guys can see it. Oh, wow, they took out a big ad. So there are some incredible dealers. I will not be at this show, but do not let that deter you one bit because you guys, this is gonna be absolutely amazing. So definitely go to that show May 1st through 3rd. So in auction news, uh, Theriots, of course, had their landmark auction for the Huguette Clark, uh, Huguette Clark collection. And so that was seen and heard around the world. And um, I think a lot of the people that went to that auction had a really great time. So they, they really did it up. And then right here, um, Frazier's did a couple things and all different auctions. This uh, A mark right there, I thought sold kind of on the, on the low end. It sold for 87,000, the, do the doll on the far right, right there. That's an Albert Mark doll. Uh, less than a hundred of them are even known to exist. And I don't know, I thought that was a really good deal. And then look at these two wonderful Maggie Bessie dolls that sold for 7,600 each. You guys, for beautiful Maggie Bessie dolls in this kind of condition, that's actually a good price too. So congratulations to the owners of those dolls. That is so exciting. Withington is a fun little auction house. They're always finding good stuff for you. So uh, that's definitely one that will be fun. Hopefully it has an art. Yeah, it's, it's in April. But um, Angela, you were at that auction. I'm glad you had a great time. So you guys, have you been to the Ohio National Doll Show? I am so excited for the Ohio National Doll Show. It is put on by Billy Harris and Gail Lemon. And last year's was so incredibly wonderful and exciting. And this year's is gearing up to be just the same. Look, you guys, look at all the different wonderful programs that are going to be happening. I am so 
excited about it come you guys come to this event i will be there i cannot wait to see all of the programs and all the things that are happening uh billy harris is really doing a great job in creating an event around the show so yes it's an incredible doll show so many amazing dealers i've seen just some of the most spectacular things for sale at this show. But there's a dinner the night before, there's seminars the day before, there's there's all kinds of just like fun little opportunities. And then at the dinners, there's all kinds of like fun table favors. There's all awesome silent auctions and drawings and stuff like that. And a lot of just fun things happening. So if you can come to that show, it's definitely don't miss it. It's the Ohio National Doll Show. I'm really excited about it. It's on October 3rd and 4th. Hello, everybody that's tuning in. It's so good to see you. So again, there are some wonderful people that take out ads. Now remember, you don't have to be a dealer like to, you guys know what I mean, to take out an ad. You can take out an ad if you want to introduce yourself to people or you want to um, sell, a, sell a doll that you have. You can take out an ad and put some of your dolls for sale. So don't be afraid to kind of branch out and do something like that. You, you, don't, have to, you don't have to be a certain kind of doll person to take part. So I was not in attendance at this Gaithersburg show, but it sounded and looked amazing. And look at all these wonderful pictures showing all the different fun things that happened at this show. It just looked great. There's so many wonderful familiar faces in all of these pictures, but I have to say one of my favorite pictures right there is Jonathan Green and Kathy Turner. Don't they just look so cute? Oh, I, I love that picture. So what a great, great um, retrospect of that show. I just love all the pictures. Good job. And here we are with part two. Again, just seeing some of the, all the different dolls. Wonderful, wonderful dolls at that show. So that is a show that is definitely, uh, no, this is the Ohio National Doll Show part two. Wow. So, oh my goodness, look at all these wonderful dolls. So the Ohio National Doll Show definitely is a bucket list show for you to attend. Don't miss it, but also don't miss the Gaithersburg Show. It's a beautiful show too. Wonderful, wonderful. You guys, my ad for Virtual Doll Convention, I just love. Look how fun this is. So we thank everyone for attending the convention. And if you guys have not registered, you can still register at any time. You don't have to be there at the time of broadcast. You can also register for uh, conventions one, two, and three. And so it's, it's really fun. Now, a lot of the videos from one I have put out public on the internet because I want you guys to learn. But just the downloads, which are not public on the internet, the, the activities and the downloads and the paper dolls, those are all worth your $25 registration. So unless my person that is in the video does not want that content public, I eventually make everything public because my goal is for you to learn and to enjoy. And because I also want to entice new members to join the virtual doll convention and I want them to see everything that it's about. And so they can't, they, they can hear from you, but they can't see it unless they can see the, the stuff. So you can um, see all of those videos on YouTube. So thank you so much for subscribing on YouTube. I really appreciate it. Thank you, Angela. We're just having the, the best time. So I just thought this ad was so cute. Uh, and of course, Remy Lou's in it. So how can we not love something with our dear, sweet Remy Lou? So here we go. Starstruck. So these are some blue ribbon winners, which they are still showing us from uh, Nashville last year. Now, uh, I love an all bisque doll. You guys know how much I absolutely love all bisque dolls. So it was a treat to take in and look at all these wonderful dolls. But look at look at these two on the bottom right. This all bisque doll. My mom has one of those, and I'm almost positive it has a swivel waist, which those are one of my favorite kind of dolls. And then look at the black all bisque next to it. That is gorgeous. I love those. Just absolutely wonderful. Of course, like I said, they're all wonderful on this page, but those two are my two favorites on the page. The blue ribbon winners are just so fun to see. So look it up here on the top corner. This is a very rare 
jointed all bisque doll. I think those are so cool. I had one earlier this year and I sold it to a very good friend and it was such a treat to have it and to see it. So the jointed all bisque dolls are really rare and super fun. That's a beautiful right there in the center, a beautiful little mignonette right there. And um, number 13 is a reproduction and she's got a cute little hat on. So there are some beautiful dolls on this page just to look at. Uh, look at these wax dolls. Aren't they just wonderful? Look at number one that fashion wax. Oh, so good. Hello, y'all. Kim Hayes, so good to see you. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in for our little watch party. It is just so fun to have this monthly time with you. I really, really look forward to it. So here on the composition page, there's some awesome dolls. Again, what is your guys's favorite kind of doll? What is your favorite, favorite kind of doll? Mine has got to be, we've talked about this before, and it can change. So, I mean, right now for our issue, my favorite dolls are P.D. Smith dolls. <laughs> I don't have one. I've seen a couple of them in person, but, um, but my main thing is I really do love character dolls. And of course, uh, paper mache dolls I'm really loving right now too, because I've been getting to know one of my mom's favorite girls and it's just been so fun to just have her and get to know her in the house as well. So I don't know, what's your favorite doll right now? Let me know that, okay? All right, so uh, it's fun to see all the different things. So you guys, oh man, I wrote Susan Foreman a card to thank her for this awesome, awesome article because you have no idea, well, maybe you do if you've read the article or you knew about P.D. Smith dolls in the past. These are so incredibly rare. There are less than 20 of these dolls even known to exist and they are absolutely incredible. I I love this article. Susan Foreman owns four of these magical dolls and she has shared them plus a wealth of information in this article about the P.D. Smith family. Now, the wonderful thing about these P.D. Smith dolls is they were totally made in America, in California. So it doesn't get more American than that. Just, just, it's just such a wonderful family story and um, they're just so lifelike and wonderful. They wanted to make them so they would look lifelike and they were made between, mostly between 1913 and 1922-ish. Um, but uh, they really had their heyday just in the early 1920s. And they started them because they wanted to make something that was uh, just, just really lifelike and wonderful. And there was a halt in um, doll making. And so they, they started making these dolls. And when you guys see them and you see these pictures, you're just going to be there isn't that much information about them, which is why it's so wonderful to see. Um, after World War I, there was, a, there was like, they, it was hard to get dolls imported and stuff like that, and there was a big demand for dolls. And so that's why they started making them. Unfortunately, the problem was they didn't know a whole lot about, they couldn't make them so they were affordable. They were really, really, really expensive. They were like eight to $10, I believe it. And it says in the article exactly how much, but I think they were like eight to $10, which at that time was really expensive and the market couldn't handle it. So they couldn't uh, stay in business and they were in a business a very, very, very short time, which is why they're so rare. Angela said, um, referring back to my favorite dolls right now, Angela said, wide hip Kathy, Katie Cruza. You'll get one, girl. Manifest it. You'll find one. I promise. Let me know what your guys' favorite doll is right now. So let's look at some more pictures of these wonderful, elusive P.D. Smith dolls. Study these photos, you guys. Study the photos so that you can see what they look like. Because if you did not know what one of these dolls was, you could easily find one of these. I am not even kidding. At a garage sale, at a doll show, you just net like in an attic somewhere, an estate sale, you never know where you're gonna find one of these dolls. They are absolutely wonderful. My two favorites in the entire world 
are owned by Susan Foreman and Michael Canadas and David Robinson at the Grove Inn. So Susan has this wonderful awake doll that's smiling right there. Of course, it's on the cover. Look how sweet. It looks so real. I could just reach out and give it a kiss. It is the sweetest little doll. And then look, look at this smiling one. It's at the Grovian Doll Museum. You guys, if you ever get to the Grovian and you can see this doll in person, it looks just like a real sleeping baby. And it is as big as one. It, they're, it's, it's a big doll. They're just wonderful. I've done videos with Michael showcasing this doll. Uh, there's an audience choice video on YouTube where we talk about this doll. It's just wonderful. So it is so nice that two incredible examples of these dolls belong to two, three wonderful people that are always so willing to share. So uh, it makes me feel good. Now, one of the wonderful things about this article are these fabulous and amazing, super rare archival photos of the dolls in this newspaper right there, a Santa Cruz article, and then the dolls being made in the doll factory. What an absolute treat it is to see this. They're painting them. They're making them right there. Mrs. P.D. Smith right there preparing the dolls. So, ah, look at that. Look at that sleeping baby. Oh, I want one. I want one so bad. That's Mr. P.D. Smith. Such a great article. I really enjoyed this. Let me know what you think. Good job, Susan Foreman. She gave us so much. Look at all this wonderful information about the factory at the time and everything that happened and then everything she knows till now. But look right up here. There's 16 dolls in collections in museums, hence making them extremely rare. And then two more were found in 2017, which Michael and David got one, Susan Foreman got the other. So that's nine, 16, that's 18 dolls. Okay, that is insane. That's rarer than an A mark. The, uh, that, it's such a great article. Okay, so the next article is by Lori Baker, who is such a nice person. And she did this wonderful article on little French accessories. And isn't it wonderful just to see little French accessories? I just love them. So if you were a girl that had a French doll at the time, and you were able to buy some of these wonderful accessories, lucky, because... Oh, so much fun. Look at these little French accessories in red. I just love it. What is one of your guys' favorite types of accessories for a doll? That could be like, that can be clothing. That can be gloves or a hat or a parasol or something like that. That can be, I really like when a doll has a doll, like the doll has its own doll accessory as a doll. And Bonnie said, are there ever enough accessories? I don't think so. Some people just collect accessories. And if you have something like a Hure doll, it's all about the accessories or a Romer, uh, especially Hure's though. It's just the, the clothing and the accessories, you can just, you can get one doll and then just go crazy on clothing and accessories. No, you can never have enough clothing and accessories. They're definitely my favorite part of my wardrobe and a doll's wardrobe. And a lot of times they sell for as much as a doll because they are really rare. So in this article, it's so fun to see some of the wonderful accessories. And uh, Marcy said, yeah, you know what? A lot of the more modern dolls have a wonderful range of accessories, which I think is really brilliant and wonderful. Look at that. Look at that music box that opens up with sewing tools in the top of it. Oh, I would love to have that for one of my dolls. So great. Bonnie says, I'll never catch up on Hure accessories. Love hats. Girl, you do love hats. You, you have some beautiful hats in your, uh, in your accessory trousseau. Kim calls them exquisite bits. Heck yeah. I love that. Exquisite bits. So much fun. Look at that. Look at, and I love animals as an accessory. Look at that funny dog right there. Oh my gosh. It almost reminds me of Murray, but with two stripes down his head. So much fun. So this is a great, it's just a treat for the eyes to see all these wonderful little accessories. You can see this little rare purse 
and just all these fun, wonderful, wonderful things. Let me know if you guys read this article and what you thought. Just fun. Isn't it fun to see all that? It's all about the accessories. Look at this Jimo Blue. Look at her wonderful brooch and her necklace and this over the top bonnet, so incredible. Ugh. She's got some exquisite little bits right there. I love hat boxes. Look at that matching purse. Oh, such a spoiled girl. If you guys have some spoiled girls, post them in the comments. I wanna see some of their things. Look at, the, look at these travel accessories. Oh man, traveling in style. And people actually traveled like this too, which is so fun. It's a wonderful way to look back into history. Look at that, look at that vanity box. They have these, like th this was real size too for real people. So just amazing. So much fun, look at that. Sammy Oden just came out with a, a wonderful catalog book on uh, French doll accessories. So definitely look that up. The, let's see, well, the UFDC convention is having a fabulous 50s convention coming up in July, if you have not heard about that. It is coming up. There are some fun things that are happening, including Dolly Bingo and a Sock Hop. It is in Texas. And oh, you'll also go to see the wonderful collection of Gail Cook and Diana Effner is the souvenir artist. One thing I want to tell you about Gail Cook's collection because I've seen it, I've been to her house, it's awesome. So thank you so much Gail Cook for continually always sharing your dolls and doing a wonderful job in opening up your home and your collection. Gail puts wonderful dolls into competition and it has been, in my experience, the only time I've been able to see a lot of these dolls in person. So thank you so much, Gail. Maureen says, is that Murray's ancestor in the chair? For sure, isn't it? Um, so funny, it is. That's what I was just saying. It looks just like, it looks just like Murray. So anyway, I'm, um, I'm excited about this issue because there are so many fun things in it. So hello, everybody that's tuning in. Happy Saturday. Welcome to our Antique Doll Collector Read Party. All right, so um, let's do some more reading and checking out of our wonderful magazine right here. Okay, Susie Cute, you guys, this is such a fun little article. And it starts off with Louis Armstrong. He was in a very famous commercial for Topper Toys talking, uh, showing the Susie Cute dolls. So guess what I have done for our watch party? Okay, let me, let me turn it around. I, um, I got the commercial for us to see. You guys want to see it? I'm going to, I'm going to see if this works. I'm going to put my, um, I'm going to put my computer on the other side so we can watch the commercial together because it is a really, really fun commercial. So let's, let's see if it'll, let's see if it'll work. Hang on. Our, our read parties are live. So let's, uh, let's do it. Maybe that doesn't work. Nope. <laughs> Not yet. Oh, good old Louis Armstrong. He's so good. Susie Cute. Oh. Louis Armstrong. Let me try it. Susie Cute. Susie Cute needs a mommy. Susie Cute needs you. Isn't that just such a great little tagline? Um, 
I also, when I was looking for this video, I found out that Louis Armstrong has 1,088,000 followers on YouTube. That's killer. Good job, Louis Armstrong. Who doesn't love him? I just love that commercial. So this is a really fun, and you guys, that wasn't, it, it was kind of hard to watch on a read party. I just, I was just experimenting to try something kind of fun, but you guys can see, of course, the, the whole commercial on YouTube. Just Google it and you'll see it. So, um, so much fun. Bonnie says, I have three Susie cute dolls. I took one as a travel doll a few years ago. Yeah, please post photos. You guys will be able to post photos as soon as our read party is done and um, on this page page and then it'll of course also be on YouTube but you can't post pictures while a live one's happening but right after it's done please post your photos I think that would be so fun look at these now we were just talking about French fashion accessories and look at Susie Cute's accessories you guys look at that little stroller and that little attached tray oh my gosh it's so cute I think Susie cute. I mean, it's all about the accessories. Look at her little playground, all the different graphics and all the fun things that you could buy for your Susie cute dolls. I mean, look, how could you not? Susie cute needs a mommy. Susie cute needs you. Oh, doesn't it make you want to go out and get a Susie cute? Look at her little travel case. Susie cute is so cute. Google is a verb for sure. <laughs> Kim said. I love how Google has become a verb. That's right. So this is a fun article by Linda Holderman. She wrote an article, I believe, in the last issue too. And she has been giving us some really good information about dolls from around the world. So these are dolls uh, that a lot of times I just do not know anything about. And these are dolls from Hungary. And they're a wonderful way to time travel and to learn about different countries and different places through the costume. As you guys know, costume is a wonderful way for us to a travel and learn about history. So this again has great pictures, lots of wonderful information, and it's just a lot of fun. In the back of the magazine, there is the Sell Your Doll Emporium. So another thing that I just wanna stress is that if you want to sell dolls, I'm gonna do a video soon. I have a lot of fun video things in mind, but I'm gonna do one soon on different ways to sell dolls. And if you're, if you're a collector, and so I think that it's really fun to sometimes sell a doll and it's okay to sell a doll because you want to invest in a different kind of doll or, or whatever. So if, if the doll doesn't speak to you, the best thing that you can do is get it to somebody who it does speak to. So that's totally fine. And one of the ways that you can sell dolls is um, in this little emporium, which is which is just uh, it's just a fun thing to do. So um, towards the end of the article is the calendar of events, which don't miss this because it's got some great events going on. You can see what's going on for the rest of February. You can see what's going on for March. And it's just a wonderful way to look and to see what's going on. If there's something that is in your neighborhood, in your state, or in a neighboring state, definitely go and check it out. I think it's just a wonderful way. There's doll shows is where you can do some incredible networking and meet people, join clubs. You guys, it's all about networking. Um, you might wonderful, you might um, ask how I was able to pull off a virtual doll convention. Well, it, one of the biggest reasons is because I am very well networked. I know a lot of people and I've gotten to know them through going to shows and of course my being my mother's daughter and, and, the, and the wonderful friends that she made. Um, basically, that's, that's how I was able to do it is, is making friends and meeting people. So it's always wonderful to go to doll shows and to join clubs and organizations and be like a guest that day or whatever to get to know people and to network. It's a really, really important thing to do. And um, you guys can network right online too by joining the virtual convention, friending different people on Facebook, doing stuff like that. It's a wonderful way to network, following people's pages and getting to know them. So if you guys have any questions about anything, Post them in the comments. Share your favorite dolls that you have right now. Share your Susie cute dolls. And I really enjoyed spending a little time with you today on this beautiful Saturday. And I hope that you um, take the time to subscribe to Antique Doll Collector. 
I give us kind of an overview of the wonderful highlights of the magazine, but I don't actually read all the articles. One, because that would take like three hours and two, because uh, you need to read them. So read these articles, get this magazine. It is so good. Go to antiquedollcollector.com. I want to thank Antique Doll Collector for putting out such a great publication. I want to thank you guys so much for tuning in today and spending a little time with me on Saturday. If you have not subscribed to me on YouTube, give that a subscribe. And if you click the little bell button, it'll give you a notification every time I upload something. I upload two to three videos a week on YouTube. And that is fresh content that I'm doing. And it is also um, videos from past virtual conventions. So um, the January virtual convention is almost all on YouTube. And then we're going to start into June, uh, June 2019 soon. So we got so much wonderful content for you guys. It's all about the content. All right. I hope you guys had a wonderful rest of your day. Thank you so much for tuning in. I love you guys so much. It's been such a great week. And I can't thank you enough for being here and being a part of my tribe. All right. Have a great Saturday, everybody. Bye.